Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. And how wonderful it is as we have gathered on this octave of Easter, the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, to celebrate Holy Eucharist. And for these children, they will receive the Holy Eucharist for the first time. So we know that our God is a God of love, slow to anger, abounding in mercy 
So let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast 
kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The faithful all used to meet by common consent in the portico of Solomon. No one else ever dared to join them, but the people were loud in their praise, and the numbers of men and women who came to believe in the Lord increased steadily. So many signs and wonders were worked among the people at the hands of the apostles that the sick were even taken out into the streets and laid on beds and sleeping mats in the hope that at least the shadow of Peter might fall across some of them as he went past. People even came crowding in from the towns round about Jerusalem bringing with them their sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and all of them were cured. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is God.
reading from the book of the Apocalypse. My name is John, and through our union in Jesus, I am your brother and share your sufferings, your kingdom, and all you endure. I was on the island of Patmos for having preached God's word and witnessed for Jesus. It was the Lord's day, and the Spirit possessed me, and I heard a voice behind me shouting like a trumpet. Write down all that you see in a book. I turned round to see who had spoken to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and surrounded by them, a figure like a son of man, dressed in a long robe, tied at the waist with a golden girdle. When I saw him, I fell in a, de in a dead faint at his feet. But he touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. It is I, the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now I am to live forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of the underworld. Now write down all that you see of present happenings and things that are still to come. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord and he said to them again peace be with you as the father sent me so am i sending you after saying this he breathed on them and said receive the holy spirit for those whose sins you forgive they are forgiven for those whose sins you retain they are retained thomas called the twin who was one of the twelve was not with them when jesus came when the disciples said we have seen the lord he answered unless i see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made and unless I can put my hand 
into his side. I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the doors were closed and the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look here at my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. They are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel that we have heard happened on the eighth day after Jesus rose from the dead. But in order for us to understand what has taken place, we need to go back to the first day. On the first day of resurrection, Sunday, Jesus appeared to Mary of Magdala. And when he appeared to Mary of Magdala, he told her to go and tell the brothers that I have risen from the dead. And Mary went and told Peter and John, the beloved disciple, and they went running to the tomb. But when they came to the tomb, they only saw an empty tomb and the cloths that Jesus was wrapped in. A little later that day, there are two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. And as they are walking on the road to Emmaus, they are having a discussion about what has happened and Jesus appears to them and Jesus starts to walk with them and Jesus asks what has happened and they looked at him and say you must be the only person who don't know what has happened and they told Jesus that we believed in Jesus and they put him to death and he will rise from the dead and Jesus took the scriptures and he started to explain to them from the law, the prophets and the Psalms that he was to rise from the dead but they still did not recognize Jesus. And then Jesus sat at table with them. And as he sat at table, Jesus celebrated the sacred meal. Jesus celebrated Eucharist. He celebrated Holy Communion. 
And when he broke the bread, then they recognized it was Jesus. And they got excited. And Jesus vanished before their eyes. And they got excited and they went back to Jerusalem and told the disciples that Jesus rose from the dead and they recognized him at the breaking of the bread. My dear brothers and sisters, that is why we celebrate Eucharist. That is why your sons and daughters, these children are celebrating first holy communion because it is in the breaking of the bread they will come to recognize jesus so the breaking of the bread is not simply a meal but it is an encounter to meet jesus so what do we have to this point we have that the first christian community is gathering on a sunday they are gathering on the day of the resurrection and this will become the pattern of christian gathering so christians started to gather on the day of the lord the day of the resurrection so many people will say christian gather on the sabbath but no, Christians actually gathered on the day of the resurrection, which became the Sabbath for Christians. So it is very important that we gather at a, Christ, at a Christian community on a Sunday. And today's reading shows us why. So in the evening now, the disciples heard that Jesus rose from the dead and they are hiding because they are fearful of the Jews and as they are fearful and they are talking there are ten disciples present as we should know how many disciples were there twelve but then Judas went and he did something very bad he went and he hung himself so therefore there's only 11 disciples but then as we read in this upper room there's only 10 because thomas is absent and thomas is absent so only 10 disciples are gathered and we need to understand when we are absent we are going to miss out God's blessing. So it is very important as a Christian community, we gather on a Sunday. Well, we know that we were in a pandemic and we were not able to gather on a Sunday, on the day of the Lord. So the church says during this high point of uh, this pandemic, you could gather any day of the week but we need to understand although we are still in a pandemic it is not it is not bad as how it was things are still bad but not horrible so things have opened up so we could gather on a Sunday and we need to gather on a Sunday because it is a day of the Lord it is a day of resurrection and therefore these daughters and sons of yours need to gather for the breaking of bread to recognize Jesus and they need to gather also to receive his blessing so we see only 10 disciples are there and they are talking about the news that Jesus have risen from the dead the news they got from Mary of Magdala they are talking about Peter and John, the beloved disciple, they did not find the Lord. And then they are also speaking about these two disciples. They encounter the Lord at the breaking of the bread. And they are speaking. And they are locked in this upper room. And who appears to them? 
Jesus. He gives them first a blessing of peace. That is why every holy mass begins with made a peace. Always a blessing of peace on the gathering of Christian, Christian worship because we need to gather in peace because the word of God teaches us if we have offended our brother and sister leave your offering go back and make peace and then come back and celebrate the goodness of God so Jesus gives them peace they are startled they are dumbfounded he gives them peace again and then he gives them a great blessing he breathes on them and he says to them receive the Holy Spirit and he told them by receiving the Holy Spirit what they can do they can now forgive sins and they could also retain sins so we see that Jesus gave the authority to forgive sins and some people say that we don't have the authority for, to forgive sins well Jesus gave the authority to forgive sin and that was the blessing but Thomas missed out but eight days later so if you check Sunday to Sunday it is eight days we call it an octave octave eight so therefore here it is on the eighth day the next Sunday who is present now Thomas and again Jesus meets the Christian community and what is the first thing he does peace be with you but then a different blessing he gives now he says to Thomas because when we gather in the presence of the Lord God do not look at outward appearances he look at the heart so therefore Jesus knew the heart of Thomas and knowing the heart of Thomas he know Thomas was doubting and he gave him his desire when we gather in a Christian community to offer our prayer of petition to Almighty God he will grant us our desires and what was the desire for, for Thomas? He says, I will not believe unless I can put my finger in the holes of his hand and my hand in his side. So what did Jesus do? Jesus granted him the blessing. And when he reached to touch the hole in the hand of Jesus, when Jesus took him by the hand, he said, my lord and my god so therefore thomas moved from being a doubter to a believer and jesus said happy are those who have not seen but yet believe that is very important for us to know because we have gathered as a Christian community. We know that Jesus will bless us. But when we stay away, when we stay away from the Christian community, we will not receive the blessing of Almighty God. And many people, they will tell you they want God to bless them. But what are you doing to receive God's blessing? these children want the blessing of almighty god so we as adults we must teach them to gather in the presence of the lord become a believer not a doubter but become a believer and when you become a believer in jesus you will receive the blessings it is very it is very interesting that many people believe in things that are not real so many people believe in superheroes which is pure fiction 
and we have the greatest heroes of heroes Jesus Christ which is real and we still doubt but yet still we believe in fiction my dear brothers and sisters we teach not only by words and instruction we teach by example so my dear parents my dear god parents and those who are adults here when a child looks at you what example are you teaching them because when you stay away from the christian community when you fail to be present in the christian community when you fail to come to the breaking of the bread which these children are going to receive for the first time are you really teaching them to become believer what is that saying about you because my dear brothers and sisters if we really believe that jesus will bless us whenever we have an opportunity to be present to jesus we receive his blessing because every time we come to the lord the lord may have the same blessing for everyone but at the same time he also has specific blessing for you and i because he looks at our heart if the lord is to look at your heart what is the desire in your heart what do you want at this moment and if you want god to bless you with that desire in your heart ask yourself what have you done to receive that blessing what are you doing to obtain that blessing because strange enough many people want god to bless them but they do not work for the blessing that is why many people jesus know needs forgiveness and that is why we celebrate divine mercy god said in the person of jesus christ he said father forgive them they know not what they do his divine mercy his abounding love that he wants to bless us when we ourselves didn't work for it so my dear parents are you working for your blessing what example are you giving to your children remember I heard confession I cannot give out confession directly or indirectly so therefore but i'm telling you i heard confession and by hearing these children confession how were they able to do the things that they did where you think it came from so i know what example some of you have given your children you need to correct that you need to give them the example of blessing this is divine mercy a God who loves us a God who has given us an example in the person of Jesus Christ so if we are really parents and if you really love your children you will give them the best and the best you are doing it right now so congratulations the best thing you can do to for your children is to let them know Jesus but not let them know Jesus only for today because they have to know Jesus every day and they're supposed to visit Jesus the Christian community at least on a Sunday the day of resurrection and the church made it easy for you because it's so difficult the church knows that Sunday may be a difficult day for some but this Saturday evening we celebrate the Sunday mass so therefore the Christian community will gather for the resurrection of the Lord what example will you leave behind 
when your son and daughter grow up what will they say of you parents what will they say of you god parents what they will say of the priests would they say of their god parents as as that name say god parent my god parent was really a parent that god parent really know god will you fulfill that or they'll say well i never see my god parent the last time i see my god parent was first communion and when i do see my god parent my god parent came to line with mommy and daddy my god parent never came to church with me after parents what example will your child say to you when later on in life they'll say when somebody asks them why have you become good or bad you want them to say for the good i have become this good person because of my mother and father or would they say i am a bad person because of the influence of my mother and father what will they say so my dear brothers and sisters we have to recognize great blessings come from almighty god but we have to work for it and what the working is is we have to become believers and not doubters that is why divine mercy we hear about placing our trust in jesus so my dear brothers and sisters on this first communion day as these children will celebrate the breaking of the bread and not only celebrate the breaking of the bread that they will receive jesus like the early disciples so that they will have that encounter with the lord so that they will truly be blessed in this world so the onus is on us adult the children cannot come to church by themselves and god parents bring your bring your god child to church when the parents can't make it and parents don't send your children to church accompany them because jesus accompanied his disciples on the walk of life and he accompanied us every day when we call upon him so let us be companions on a journey doing the will of almighty god to receive his blessing don't allow your child only to be baptized or only to make first communion because see coming up and that's an opportunity for them to get on the 20 percent list because many parents think they could fool the priests so i tell you now that you can't fool the priests when you come and say i come into church because all i have to do is just ask one question and i've caught many parents with that so if you was in church what was the gospel sunday and they don't even know the gospel from the, the sunday and it's monday morning my dear brothers and sisters what we have to do we have to be believers that is what we are being called to that is how our blessing comes by believing in jesus christ who is lord to the glory of god the father so all the fictional thing you like to believe in put that aside and start to believe in reality jesus christ who is lord because his love endures forever. Amen.
so we have heard the word of God we have reflected on it let us stand now and profess the faith we believe in and we use the Apostles Creed in the season of Easter I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and life everlasting Amen we pray now to God our Father in the spirit of his risen son so that he may touch our lives heal us of our doubts and restore our faith for the church heavenly father we pray for holy mother church bless and guide her efforts to evangelize we pray that he may strengthen our holy father pope francis archbishop jason gordon and all the clergy with courage to proclaim jesus as victor over sin so that more people will come to know love and serve you Help those who have turned away from Christ and his church to return to the flock so that together we will worship as one body of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Pray for our priest. Dear God, we pray for our priest, Father David Kahn, Father Clifford Graham and Father Hyginus. Protect, guide, and inspire them as they shepherd your people. Help them to remain faithful to their vocation and lead by example. Bless their efforts so, they, so that they may produce strong people for your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Prayer for Trinidad and Tobago. Heavenly Father, heal our land. Trinidad and Tobago, we ask that you remove all that is not of you that plagues our twin island. Turn the minds of our leaders the right way so that whatever they do will be for the benefit of all the citizens. Let enmity, discord, and strife among the people be changed to love, peace, and harmony. Open the hearts of our people so that they receive your blessing of grace to help them to cleanse and heal Trinidad and Tobago. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. 
pray for the world. Abba Father, you sent your son Jesus into the world to show us how we must live. He was a perfect example of patience, peace, humility, love, and selflessness. Father, we know that the peoples of the world are not perfect, but we pray for the countries in the world that are at war with each other because of pride and greed and not living according to your commandments. We pray that your loving mercy will be with them at these times and that the world leaders remember that you are good, gracious, and in charge. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for the sick. God of God our Father, your Son Jesus, is the great and mighty physician. While on earth he had compassion on those who called on him for health and healing. We pray that even now Jesus will visit the sick in hospitals, homes and on the streets. May his healing touch, bring health, comfort, and peace to the sick and suffering. Lord, he Lord hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer, prayer for our First Communion candidates. Almighty God, we present to you our First Communion candidates. We ask you to bless them in a special way as they receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament for the first time. Help them to understand what a holy and wonderful privilege this is. We pray that each candidate will always be worthy of sharing in your sacred banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for family life. Jesus, you bless family life by choosing to live 30 years with your family in Nazareth. Bless all families today so that they may live together in love, peace, and harmony. We ask you to bring healing to all troubled families. Keep them united in constant prayer with Mary, our mother, so that each home will become a sanctuary of prayer, justice, peace, and love. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for Catechists. Jesus, who has risen and has made us a new creation, through you, we ask the Father to continue to bless and strengthen the First Communion Catechists in our parish. They have been chosen to nurture our children in the faith making disciples for Christ and bringing them closer to you, our Heavenly Father. Bless their families that allow them to carry out this sacred duty and may they continue to do the will of God with the wisdom, joy, and patience of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you, Father, will send more laborers into this vineyard of catechetics and strengthen all the catechists in our parish to keep on working to make our parish strong in faith, hope, and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. So I invite you at this time to add your own special intention. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And as a people of God, let us pray our synod prayer. 
we stand before you holy spirit as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us make yourself at home in our hearts teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it we are weak and sinful do not let us promote disorder do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor partiality influence our actions let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right all this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in communion of the father and the son forever and ever amen, amen. please be seated at this time we have the collection and the presentation of the gifts
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all on this day to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become fast the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may gather into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Jason our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we are married to be coerced eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him O god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
thanksgiving prayer. O oh Jesus, you have just come to me in Holy Communion. Your body is living in my body. Your heart is beating in my heart. You are truly present in me now. Thank you so much for coming into my heart. I am so glad you are here with me. Please don't ever leave me. I love you, Jesus. I want to live forever with you in heaven. Today I give myself to you. I give you my body, my mind, and my heart. Please keep me close to your heart and bring me back to you if I ever stray. You, Jesus, I love you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Very good afternoon to all gathered here to witness this blessed sacrament, these 57 children receiving the Holy Eucharist for the first time. And the parents, as Father said, it is the first time, it's not the last. You are to bring them, and I've been exhorting you all through this journey to bring your children to Mass. If, they were, if you were at Mass on the television, attend the Mass with them. Attend meanings you pay attention. We were unable to come out during the pandemic, and we hoped that you were attending Mass with your children, with your families. As we come to the climax of this journey, which was filled with challenges, as you know, the pandemic came and we had to go virtual, but we overcame some of the really big challenges going on to the devices. But Today, Mercy Sunday, we thank God for his loving and loving mercies and his kindness to us here at Our Lady of Perpetual Help, First Communion class. Father God, you have been really good to us during these times, and you have brought us along this journey, shaky, but we thank God today for his mercy. We thank our parish priest, Father David Kahn, and we thank the parish of Our Lady of Perpetual Help for the support they have given us. Father always supports the First Communion class. The others too, but I think he has a little soft spot for the younger children. He really supported us. And we had the other priests supporting us with that as well. They came into the classroom and they spoke to the children at different feasts and festivals. We had Father Hyginus for the exaltation of the cross, Father Graham during October for Mary, Father Jason Grell also spoke with them. And just recently, Father Hygienus came back when we came out to face-to-face -to -face classes. But Father Khan has been kept up to date on everything that we have been doing. We talk to him, he gives his approval, whether it's 
face-to-face -face talk or a WhatsApp message. So I think we should give Father Khan and our parish priest a lovely round of applause, please. And uh, Father, these children, as we usually do, they have their Lenten sacrifice boxes. And I'm asking Jalon Reed, one of the newly baptized, to present that to Father, please. Children, that is your contribution that you brought in, in the purple boxes. Jalen is presenting it to Father from you. Thank you very Your little much. $5, $1. And we even got three cotton bills, which I will hand over to St. Vincent de Paul because the Central Bank is giving St. Vincent de Paul a little leeway to, if anybody has cotton bills still, go through St. Vincent de Paul and they will get the money. We thank Mrs. Myrtle Spencer. She isn't here this afternoon, but she is the leader of the catechists in the parish. So on behalf of us all, we thank Auntie Myrtle coming from the First Communion catechists. And our parents, Parents, you have been very, very, very generous. Whatever we had to do and we asked you for help, you insisted. You assisted. Some of you all asked, some of you all got into the teams to present the ampers at Christmas time. And you got together, well, as families, to bring in the dry food stuff, which we see here. We got seven baskets. Jesus changed five loaves and two fish. Five loaves and two make seven. So we have seven hampers. We thank you for that generosity. And we also thank you to really being with us on this journey, parents. I know sometimes because of my background, I come over very strict. But as I say, I take this commitment very seriously, very, very seriously. I will make jokes, I'll have fun, but it's very serious and very dear to my heart. And every time it's a new challenge, new children, but I try to move along with the type of children who come to us. And I must thank our two catechists who work with me. Auntie Stephanie and Auntie Curleen. You can stand. <laughs> Auntie Stephanie and Auntie Curleen. Because Stephanie went all out with this virtual business, putting all the little videos together and everything. Um, Curleen started with the art, and I was happy because they know Miss Leslie, we know you like face to face but I had to go along with them. And I really thank God for this time that we had to do these classes. Today is Mercy Sunday, and again, I say thank God for his rich mercies to this First Communion class during the pandemic. Thank you all very, very much. So I just want to take an opportunity to thank in a very special way Mr. Strong Lightborn because when we went virtual, he's our camera person and our media person for most of our masses. So Mr. Lightborn, thank you for bringing us into the virtual world. And as usual, all those who participated in the liturgy. So I want to thank, in a very special way, our hospitality ministers, the, our ushers, our lectors, those who read the Word of God, our Eucharistic ministers, our altar servers, and as usual, with beautiful music 
and voices the Howard Paul family and Mikkel Joseph. Thank you very much. So my dear, my dear parents, I leave you with this prayer. It is a prayer that I say every time I come to Mass. I say this prayer. Lord, may I celebrate this Mass like it is my first Mass. Let it be like my last Mass or let it be like my only mass because we will encounter jesus so let our encounter with jesus be like what happened on divine mercy sunday a greeting of peace and a bountiful blessing so your children may forget the actual day of their first communion but I chose Divine Mercy Sunday because year after year, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. So it should register, this is the day that I made my first Holy Communion. So all the best and God's blessing. And children, may God truly bless you. May you experience Jesus all the days of your life. Amen. So I invite you to please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go with the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.